Hey everyone, my name is Israel and today I'm going to talk about how traffic lights work. I'll start by defining the type of traffic light I'm going to discuss with you. Then I'll move to its source of power. Once we finish discussing that, I'll talk about sensors and the way it communicates what it detects. I'll then briefly talk about the traffic system software itself, which works behind the scenes. Then I'll transition to the response from the traffic lights once they actually receive the signal from the software. I'll conclude by talking about their necessity in our everyday life and why they should be important to each of us. So first, traffic lights. What are they? And that's a rhetorical question because I'm sure most of us know what a traffic light is. We see them all the time and really we can't miss them. They're signaling devices positioned at road intersections, pedestrian crossings, and a bunch of other locations to control the flow of traffic. We typically see them operate in three colors, green, amber, and red. The amber one may be surprising to some, but a close look re would reveal that that's true. I personally wouldn't know because I'm red green colorblind, so I just look at the position of the light to figure out what I should do. At any rate, I'm going to talk about automatic signal traffic lights. A traffic light normally gets its power from a nearby power supply box, and I'm sure many of you have seen them. They're gray, they're ugly, and really they just look like boxes that don't belong. You usually find them positioned at corners of intersections where the pedestrians stand to press their signal. Well, those boxes use 120 volts of AC, or alternating current power. It's the same stuff we use at home to power light bulbs and toasters. Those power supply boxes power under road detectors that are placed at each site to sense all traffic, including motorcycles and bicycles. So when you're on the road and you see the turning arrow painted on the street, you want to be positioned over it. Because if you're too far up, sometimes the signal won't detect you. And I've had that happen to me before. So that's to all the people that like creeping towards the pedestrian crossing area to get a head start once the light turns green. Really, you should be thanking the guy next to you because they're the ones that are activating the green light for you to go. So that information picked up by those road detectors then goes to the, contr the traffic controller, which is found inside that gray power supply, supply box I talked about earlier. Um, and this talks to this software called the traffic management system. The traffic management system is a simple computer that uses the data received by those detectors to determine optimal green time, light cycle, and movement sequence to link sites along the road. That's why sometimes you'll notice when your light turns green, the light ahead may also turn green as soon as you get there. Other times you may notice the light turn red as soon as you get there. A lot of the time it's to regulate speed of the drivers on the road so you don't go flying through three to four green lights in a row traveling 60 miles per hour when the speed limit's 35 miles per hour. Another feature of the traffic management system is that it can prioritize road users like a bus, which is detected by its large weight. So like compare a bus to your average passenger car, the bus weighs a lot more, that detector senses that weight, and it can prioritize that uh, signal to turn green first. Once the system has gathered information about the vehicle sensed, it sends that information to the traffic light to project the green light, which is what we see to go. The duration of that green light depends on the volume sensed by the road detectors, along with the average data collected over time. So if that detector over that brief period of time detects um, two to three vehicles, then it'll be a shorter green light. But if it detects a car during that whole duration, then the green light will probably be longer. And then the amber light, which is followed, is based on average vehicle sensed. To give, to give an example, let's say the sensor records an average of 8 to 10 vehicles turning left in a cycle. And a reminder, a cycle is the time it takes to go through each phase, the red, amber, and green. So let's say that it records 8 to 10 over a period of a year. The amber light would be set long enough to allow the ninth car to go but the 10th car would probably need to prepare to stop unless they're zooming through then at that point they're taking that risk and then the red light of course that follows is red until all the other detectors that have sensed vehicles go through their phase and that's a traffic light but not all of them work like this the one i described with the detectors it works best for smaller cities or towns where they have less congestion that's to allow for them to skip different phases so if you're in your car and you're waiting for the light it doesn't have to go through each of them it can instead prioritize you because you're the only one it detects there there are also time-based systems 
And those are excellent for busy areas that have a consistent heavy traffic congestion. And the way it detects that or plans for that is the same way I described the amber light is that it records through you know a period of time how many vehicles pass through there and then sets a time an average time to get most vehicles across that's why sometimes on university and state street intersection you could be the only car there and you'll have the green light for a really long time or you can be the car there while it's red and you can see the left to right lanes or the east to west lanes uh, with only one car stay green for the longest time and that's because they're uh, set at a time so those ones work best, like I said, for congested areas to allow for each one to get their turn properly. Um, and that's to wrap things up. Traffic lights are so important to each of us, especially those who drive. They keep us safe. They get us to our destination faster and they allow us to share the road with others. So the next time that you are at a traffic light at a signal, you can kind of think of this presentation and know what's going on behind the scenes. And you can kind of guess which light it is based on the amount of congestion there is. Thanks, everyone.